Hello and welcome to this video about problem solving in software engineering and my strategies that I use to solve problems in software engineering. Before we talk about that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a computer science professor and I have more than 20 years of experience in software engineering, also as a software engineering manager. And I want to help you to grow your software engineering career and make the step from programmer to software engineer. If you are already a subscriber, sorry for my absence in the last couple of weeks. If you also follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen that I was traveling quite a bit and there was also a lot of stuff to do at work. So that's why I could not devote enough time to really produce a high quality video. But now I'm back with this video on problem solving techniques and problem solving strategies in software engineering. And before we talk about problem solving in software engineering, we first need to define what kind of problem solving we want to talk about. There's two kinds of problem solving in software engineering. The first one being taking a real world problem, something you have in the real world, and then breaking it down to an algorithm, to a solution you can implement. So solving a real world problem by writing software. And the second type is you already have implemented something, you already have software, but this software is not performing as it should be, is not doing what it's supposed to be or is not working at all and you wanna fix that problem. That's also called debugging. I will focus more on solving real world problems today by writing software, but all the strategies can also be used for debugging. But I will also make a more debugging focused video in the near future. So if you don't want to miss that, then please subscribe to the channel. So let's come back to problem solving in software engineering and taking a real world problem and solving that with writing software. So the first question is, why is it so hard to solve problems in software engineering? Why do we struggle sometimes when we try to solve a real world problem in software? And the answer is simple. Most of the time we solve this problem for the first time. So we haven't solved this problem before. It's new to us and it requires a new solution. And that's why it's hard, right? It's it's a lot of thought, a lot of creativity that needs to go into this problem solving. And that's why it's not easy, at least if you don't have an easy problem. But the good news is with the steps that I will outline now, you will be able to make progress in problem solving and you will be able to solve the problems. So here's the strategy that I use for problem solving in software engineering. And the first step is understand the problem. How do you do that? Well, what helps for me is writing down what I know about the problem. Everything I know, I write down in sort of a problem statement, a problem summary that describes everything that I know about the problem. Here, you can also ask questions like, what are the inputs? What are the outputs? Do you already have all information you need to solve the problem? And that's then also the second sub step of understanding the problem to write down questions that you have about the problem and to make sure that you have all the answers, that you know everything you need to know to solve the problem. And once you have that, you should already have a very good overview about the problem, maybe even already about sub problems that you need to solve in order to solve the big problem. And that's the second step. Once you have understood your big real world problem and have specified it, have written down your problem statement, the next step is trying to reduce the problem to simpler problems. Can you split the problems into two parts maybe? Three parts, four parts, whatever might be possible. 
And this is also known as the concept of divide and conquer, right? We, we try to split the big elephant problem into smaller chunks that we can solve easily and then combine the solutions of the smaller problems into the solution of the big problem. And what's interesting here is once you start doing that, the second question that you can ask yourself apart from can I split the big problem into smaller chunks is can I take something that's already existing, an existing algorithm, an existing solution, a sorting algorithm, a search algorithm, or existing data structure like a tree or a linked list and apply this to the problem, to the part of the problem. So can I solve part of the problem by an already existing solution? That's the next step that you are doing. Important is also at this step, we want to find a solution. We don't want to find yet the most efficient solution, right? So please don't make the mistake and try for the first implementation to find the most efficient solution that's out there. Just focus on a solution. It just has to work. You can optimize later. If you find the solution, you will also find ways to optimize that if they exist. But first focus on finding the solution, splitting your problem, find solutions for the sub problems. And then of course, once you have successfully divided your problem into sub problems. How can you combine now the individual solutions of the sub problems so that you get the full problem solved? That's the next question that you then have to answer and to find a solution for. And with that steps, you probably have now found a solution that solves the problem. And now it's time to do our due diligence. Now it's time to check whether the solution that we have implemented really works for all edge cases, all corner cases. So we have to come up with creative test cases. We have to think about what are things where the solution we have found might not work and then really push our solution to the limits to really ensure that it's covering all the cases and that it's working as intended. On the other hand, if you were not able to solve the problem, this attempt of dividing the problem into sub problems and then piecing the individual solutions together again might have given you additional insights into the problem itself. So if you have not yet come to the final solution, then repeat the step by understanding the problem with what you have just learned about the problem. Because every time you attempt to solve the problem and you fail, you learn more about the problem. And every time you consider this again as a new input in a new iteration, you will make more progress. And I know this can be very frustrating when you have the third, fourth, fifth attempt at solving the problem, but you have not yet made this progress. Finally, one point in time, you will solve the problem. I'm sure of that. What also helps there then, if you have done multiple iterations, multiple attempts at solving the problem, but you could not solve it, is talking to someone else about the problem or taking a break. Um, if you don't have somebody else around to talk about the problem, look at my video about the rubber ducking technique. That might also help you if you explain the problem to the rubber duck to find the solution. And of course, once you have found the solution, you can then also start optimizing. Here again, it's a good time to check whether parts of your solution can be mapped to an already existing solution, an already existing algorithm. And then you can check what's the most efficient implementation of that algorithm. So for instance, if you require a search algorithm, you can check what's the most efficient search algorithm for your use case, knowing the data that's going in and out. Or if you need a data structure, what's the best implementation of a graph structure, for instance, for your problem. So to summarize, what are the four steps that you can use to solve any problem within software engineering? The first one is understand the problem, write down what you know about the problem, ask questions about the problem. The second one is try to divide and conquer, try to split the big problem 
into sub problems that are easier to solve that are smaller and then solve the individual problems the third one is think about how you then can combine the solution of the sub problems into the big solution into the solution of the overall problem and then fourth do your due diligence really try to think about all the edge cases all the corner cases that might happen invest time into testing your solution and then of course try to optimize try to reduce your problem to already existing algorithms where you can find the most efficient implementation now i'm curious do these steps help you in solving your problem have you tried them or do you use a different strategy in problem solving what is your experience write it down in the comment section below and of course if you found this video helpful if you've learned something then please smash the like button that helps me out immensely and keeps me motivated to do those videos and of course if you want to further grow your software engineer and want to see more content like this and not miss the video about problem solving during debugging then please subscribe to my channel so that i can see you in the next video